a very good uh, experience with Optos so far with us and uh, with our uh, chain of hospitals. So uh, I'll be briefly talking on uh, the ultra wide field imaging in uh, the Disha group of hospitals. So uh, greetings from Disha hospitals. Uh, actually, it was a wonderful uh, uh, human story where Douglas Anderson's five-year-old son went blind in one eye because of retinal detachment, which was not detected early and the treatment was late. Although he was having regular eye exams, uh, Mr. Douglas felt that probably in a child, it was very difficult to examine children holistically. And uh, so he went out seriously. He is an inventor uh, engineer from Scotland and uh, he resolved and what this result yielded in this 25 years was that is in front of you. Uh, our experience with Optos started way back in 2012. The, as you see in 2011, Daytona was introduced. Uh, so that is when the technology really crystallized. And now moving forwards, they have a wonderful partner with them, with them. that is Nikon. So this is uh, the entire thing, but uh, going by uh, the technology, it is so uh, wonderfully conceived that uh, you have an ellipsoid mirror and which produces a low intensity lasers uh, into a virtual scan point in front of the pupil. And from there on, it can image 200 degrees of the retina, which is <coughs> itself such a wonderful idea. So, uh, I mean, they use three wavelengths, the blue, green, and red. The, for surface vessels, it is for the blue, for the retina, and the inner layers, it is the green. And for the deep choroidal structures, it's the red uh, low intensity lasers. Now, this is the ellipsoid mirror, which is placed in front so that the laser, these low intensity lasers can form that virtual point and then go in to scan 200 degrees of the retina. And uh, then they are taken up by high resolution and high capacity detectors which actually collate and form the image. I'm not a technical person, but it's a wonderful idea. One thing that occurs that when you're using an ellipsoid uh, uh, mirror and you're reflecting it and you are actually imaging an ellipsoid structure, which is the retina, there will be noises and uh, distortions in the periphery, but they have sorted it out. And uh, this is the great thing about it. And so we get so crystal clear peripheral imaging, ultra wide field imaging of the entire retina. So the journey became with a very sad story, but Mr. Anderson took it up positively and brought in to us a solution. And that solution is evolving by the day. We have a host of retinal surgeons, Professor Mangat from PGI Chandigarh, now with Dr. Grewal's Institute, Dr. Chaitra Jaidev from uh, Netra, uh, uh, Narayana Netralia in Bangalore. We have uh, Dr. Jacob Chang from the Eagle Eye Center in Singapore. We have Dr. Parth Rana from uh, Netralia Super Speciality in Ahmedabad. And we have uh, Dr. Devdulal Chakraborty from Disha Eye Hospitals who will be speaking just after me on our Optos experience. So, in short, what Mr. Anderson finally realized that something which was, which seemed as a impossible technologically and technically was resolved, but we probably felt that it is clinically unnecessary. 
at this point i would make a comment that the most users of this technology are the chain optical or the opticians because they are getting a retinal specialist in their uh, optical dispensing in their optical examination so th they they are the biggest uh, users of this technology so though we may see think that it is clinically unnecessary uh, it has a wide scope and uh, therefore if it is thought clinically unnecessary by the doctors it probably would doom commercially but with the initial struggles i think now nikon would confirm that there are more than 10000 units or even more installed world over so this is one thing uh, some uh, staff of ours bought their pet rabbit and the imaging is so easy that our technical people could image a rabbit's retina just hold it schedule it and put it in front of that device and it gave this picture to us so the image is so simply done and probably takes less time than a good indirect ophthalmoscopic examination done with the most experienced hands with the advantage of documentation which can be used for follow ups and for patient counseling so there's a wide scope and of course there are other retinal implications which my retina friends will tell us so we do optos as a screening tool for many things all myops we advise that on first visit have a peripheral retinal evaluation with optos we tell the retinal doctors can also do it as chaitra is busy in his in her saturday clinic in bangalore so retina specialists are busy so this is a useful alternative where we can uh, screen every myopic retina and we do that in disha so then we can follow up the retinal lesions and myopia greater than 5 as we all know are risky and therefore we follow it up frequently all myops before cataract operation or yak capsulotomy we do follow it up and also after operation and all <coughs> after uh, a myopic uh, cataract surgery we follow it, follow them up regularly with optos all cases of flashes and floaters in disha goes through optos and then of course as you decide as the retina surgeons decide on prophylactic laser treatments they are documented and after laser they are followed with optos and of course the other eye of retinal detachments family history of retinal detachments they pay, these patients fall under a category where they are frequently followed under the optos screening and of course uh, we will be discussing many more modalities where the retina surgeons find it useful this ultra wide field imaging and uh, so that is the entire gamut now how we evolved the first reason was i tell you uh, in february 2012 after we went to the american academy we saw this equipment i did my own optos and then i was fairly convinced and uh, because the retina surgeons are so busy i thought that you know we should buy this because we have so many myopic patients whom in a busy comprehensive care we do not give them a uh, full comprehensive retinal evaluation so that was in 8 years back telling our experience of dx200 which can also do angiography we there is something called a polygon we have changed it thrice it costs us with the person who comes from outside from china people used to come and it cost us 6000 dollars we did it three times that was the entire maintenance on this equipment it's still functioning we do our angiographies peripheral angiographies with this machine then in we bought two machines uh, in march 2014 and these are hospitals which see more than 500 patients so they also the detonas have been working for 6 years mostly hassle free we have our technical in charge has been trained uh, by optos and in australia and he can um, 
uh, identify defects and if any replacements are required, it, it is done. So uh, I thank the entire sequence of Optos. The first was Biomedics from whom we bought the DX200. The next Daytonas were bought through Alcon. Then it was from Optos PLC directly. And now Nikon has come through which we have bought these two Daytonas. So currently we have uh, 24 uh, machine year experience of this ultra, fi ultra wide field imaging. And uh, this is how our stats go. Like in Barakpur, we have almost had close to uh, 100,000 uh, Optos examinations. Uh, in Durgapur, we had 32,000. In Sharapuli, about 28,000, 30,000. And these two machines are new and also hit by COVID, as you understand. So uh, these will pick up as time goes. So, uh, I mean, we are just saying that, you know, how many patients do we see? I mean, almost 10% of the patients, as is obvious, uh, do come to hospitals for power checkup. So we picked up how many patients we have in Barakpur, 24,000 myopic patients who have powers of minus one and above. So about 300, um, 3,000 patients for 3,000 patients of floaters and about uh, 1,500 patients uh, who had diopters below uh, 18 on uh, for cataract surgery. So in Durgapur, which is almost half of Barakpur, the figures are only half. So in Sharafuli, again, the figures are almost half uh, in every of these peers. Then we had this instrument in Gorihat, then which had a neighboring branch called, uh, as Behala. So these two combined would yield a reasonable figure because we may have to make it this equipment viable also. And now we have picked up a uh, new town which covers for these centers. And this is the entire gamut of what we do and uh, how many Optos comes out of it. Till now, I think we have done more than uh, 3 lakh Optos uh, screenings. So another useful thing is during COVID time, we use this, uh, you know, cling flames, which are very inexpensive for every case. It takes about a one minute to do this thing. And uh, the patients are safe from, you know, whatever contaminations that you may say. So you just stick it on and uh, make a central opening so that you can do the imaging properly. And uh, I, uh, this is quite patient friendly. So this is one thing we wanted to share with you. Having said that, you know, that Mr. Anderson said that it is, we have to decide whether it is clinically useful. We have to decide whether it is commercially viable. Well, I do understand this very much that cost is a very important part of quality. And, but if we can bring costs at a at an acceptable level, then, you know, quality overtakes and takes over cost by economies of scale and by the learnings that you have, which is accumulated by the numericals. So I firmly believe that first, we have to give some cost benefits to the patients and then they lap it up and then the thing keeps moving forward. So I'm a very, big believer of uh, this ultra wide field uh, imaging system and uh, we need to simplify it because simplification I believe is the ultimate sophistication and this is a beautiful quote that I always is very dear to me from the master. Thank you very much for uh, your listening through the whole thing. Now I will ask uh, our uh, retina consultant, Dr. Devdulal Chakraborty, to take over and uh, tell us uh, more about how the retinal uh, doctors feel about and what they do with Optos in our institution.
Thank you very much for a patient hearing. Thank you.